Hello and welcome to the final chapter of the engineering ethics course, where we will discuss the relationship between engineers and the environment. Well, to put it in simple terms, it's complicated. Engineers truly have a complex relationship with the environment. On one end, engineers have provided solutions for big environmental issues such as the ozone hole. But on the other end, they created a multitude of environmental issues like the ozone hole through the excessive use of chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs. The instinct of any good engineer is to seek the help on the matter from engineering codes. Unfortunately, many codes do not have a sufficient amount of references to the environmental issues that we are facing today. They may contain some provisions, but nothing definitive. The ASCE code is the code with the most environmental considerations and can be used by engineers from any other major as a guide. While reading in the code, you will find two types of engineering related commandments, requirements and recommendations. Requirements are must do's and they usually include the words shall and must. Failing to follow requirements is punishable and they must always be followed. Contrastly, recommendations are optional and usually left to the engineer's discretion and his or her application of the standard of care. They usually have the verbs can or may. How should engineers apply the standard of care when it comes to the environment? Engineers should balance between two ideas here, keeping the environment pollutant free and therefore keeping the public healthy. On the other hand, People need to find work and keep benefiting from the environment. Therefore, the question becomes how do we benefit from the environment while keeping the environment and the public safe? Applying the standard of care requires tools. And one tool that engineers keep utilizing is the degree of harm, which is an assessment of the impact of the worst case scenario. But when it comes to the environment, the degree of harm assessment must not take the financial costs in high regard, but instead the safety of humans and ecosystems. The more dangerous and irreversible a harm is, the more focused we should be at preventing it. Considering how organizations and engineers behave when it comes to dealing with the environment, we can identify three types of attitudes. We have a subminimal attitude, a minimalist attitude, and a progressive attitude. A subminimal philosophy believes that caring for the environment is expensive and requires a lot of work. Therefore, it is much cheaper to pay the fines related to negligence of environmental policy than to pay requirements of following the policies. Such entities end up doing little to no work when it comes to protecting the environment. Minimalists try to find a way to minimize costs while following regulations. Their main motive is not to get fined for not following regulations. Consequently, their approach to the environment is not enthusiastic nor proactive. Progressives prioritize the environment, and all environmental issues and ideas have the full support of the company's management. This mentality goes as far as creating full-fledged environmental divisions within the company. With the rise of environmental issues, it is critical now more than ever for us to promote a more progressive attitude towards the environment. This can be done via various steps that include carefully handling any dangerous chemicals, announcing any dangerous or hazardous activities and taking all the precautions ahead of time, encouraging an environmentally friendly mode of operation, supporting and encouraging research that empowers environmental safety and the safety of the public, helping and collaborating with other entities towards a better environment, and finally, always share your findings and best practices so that other people can benefit from them. This leaves us with the question of what should engineers do towards the environment? The answer is to always try to help the environment and make sure that you do not introduce new pathogens to the environment. 
and also make sure to take a stand when your employer is hurting the environment. The last case study of the course hits a little bit closer to home. As I am recording this video, there is one of them 15 minutes away by car. I am talking about the Lebanese dump sites and the Lebanese garbage crisis that is still ongoing till today. Today, hundreds of garbage dumping sites and burning sites are spread all over the country, causing toxic emissions and unbearable smells. The rates of cancers and respiratory diseases are on the rise and it is all because some engineers decided to save money instead of finding real solutions to the garbage problem. Check the details in the attached video. This brings us to the end of the course on engineering ethics and how should engineers behave in their careers. I hope that you have enjoyed the topic and learned from it. Please go ahead and tell us in the comments about novel concepts or courses that you'd like to learn about.